Welcome back to learn more about on-chip interconnect. In this lecture, we are going to have a look at how the propagation delay caused by resistive wires can be modeled using simple pie-shaped RC models. Since wire delay increases with the wire length squared, we will also have a look at how wire delay can be minimized by inserting repeaters along long wires. The outline of this short video lecture is as follows. After this short introduction, I will introduce a distributed RC Pi model for delay estimates. We will look at wires with a wire resistance per unit length L, denoted R, wire capacitance per unit length L, denoted C, and find that the distributed wire delay is proportional to one half RC L squared. For simplicity, assume the existence of a dom dominant RC time constant for describing the output signal at the wire end. We will also show how repeaters can be inserted to keep wire lengths short. And with respect to this topic, we will find the optimal number of repeaters for any wire length, and we will find the critical wire length for repeater insertion. Finally, we will also introduce a new concept the concept of wire effort, uh, a concept that is in relation to logical effort or electrical effort and um, parasitic delay. And finally, we will conclude. Let's start by having a look at an example where we are asked to estimate the delay of an inverter driving an identical inverter across a one millimeter wire. We will assume a wire capacitance of 200 femtofarads per millimeter and a resistance of 800 ohms per millimeter, same values as we had in previous examples. This wire will affect the propagation delay if the wire RC product is larger than the reference RC product uh, we have for the inverter, that is the, its effective resistance times its gate input capacitance. To ohms times 3.6 femtofarads uh, gives us the 7.2 picoseconds. The given parameters, they yield a wire resistance of 800 ohms and a wire cap of 200 femtofarads. So the wire RC product is now 160 picoseconds. The contribution to the system time constant from the distributed wire will be one half of its RC constant, that is 80 picoseconds, and it will increase the total time constant from the 14.4 picoseconds we know, or short wire, to almost 95 picoseconds. The wire resistance and capacitance are distributed along the wire, which must be modeled by segments. It has been found that in SPICE circuit simulations, a three-segment PI model will be accurate to within 3%. But for simple analytical estimates, we are going to use single-segment PI model. So this is what we have. An inverter driving an identical inverter across a one millimeter wire modeled by an RC PI model. We will start by introducing the electrical inverter models for the driver and the input capacitance for the load. What is now the delay of this two-stage RC circuit? Well, it can actually be found analytically from a second-order differential equation. Now let's simplify the wire circuit to find the solution to our delay problem. We will do that by redrawing the wire circuit as a two-stage RC circuit. The first stage with resistance R1, capacitance C1. Second stage, resistance R2, capacitance C2. Now let's obtain the transfer function or the second order linear differential equation describing the problem using the method of your choice. These two equations, the transfer function and the differential equation, they are just the two sides of the same coin. 
since the characteristic equation obtained by equating to zero the polynomial in the denominator of the transfer function will give us the solutions to the problem. So let's denote the two solutions to the characteristic equation by S1 and S2 respectively. For the case of a falling output, the solution is then given by the sum of two falling exponentials. The characteristic equation also yields the sum of the two time constants. We are going to denote this sum tau e is equal to the sum of tau 1 plus tau 2, and it's easily obtained directly from the equation here. In most cases, one time constant is dominant, so we can neglect one of these, and then for the case of a falling output, it results in a simple falling exponential, v to d times e to the minus t divided by tau e. And for this problem, we have the propagation delay equal to 0.7 times tau e. On this slide, I'm going to compare the approximative and exact solutions to a circuit problem where the relationship between R1 and R2 and C1 and C2 are given here. Already for these 20% differences between the resistances and capacitances respectively, one of the time constants become dominant. So tau1 is equal to 2.45 and tau2 is equal to 0.3. There is almost a factor of 10 in difference between them. So this graph compares the exact two-pool solution with the approximative exponential decay, assuming a dominant time constant equal to the sum of tau1 and tau2, and we denote that tau e equal to 2.75. And having a look at the graph, we can see that there are some differences in the initial phase due to the short, due to the inference of the short time constant. While at the 50% level, where we're going to measure the time delay, the differences are negligible. How to remember the delay formula we just derived? It's quite easy, actually, because you can obtain it by taking each resistance and multiply it by its downstream capacitance. So we can take R1, multiply it with the sum of C1 and C2, plus R2 multiplied with C2. Or, equally, you can take each capacitance and multiply it by its upstream resistance. So we can take C1, multiply it with R1. You can take C2, multiply it with R2 plus R1. Having developed a wire delay model based on a dominating time constant, let us return to our previous delay example and apply the model to get an estimate of the delay. The dominating time constant is given by this expression, derived the following way. We take the first resistor, multiply it with its downstream capacitances, the parasitic capacitance of the driver, the wire capacitance, and the gate capacitance of the loading inverter, plus the wire resistance and multiply it with its downstream capacitance, that is half the wire capacitance, and again the loading, the input gate capacitance. This expression can be rewritten so that we can have a closer look, like this. The first part is the delay without the wire. Then we have two terms that involves the, uh, either res the resistance or the capacitance of the driving inverter, and we don't know these values yet. We haven't decided on a size for the inverters. Plus the distributed wire delay, Rc divided by two. So this is about 80 picoseconds, so the delay with the wire increases from the original 14.4 to more, almost 95 picoseconds. 
the de dominating time constant, it can be normalized with respect to the inverter RC constant. This way we will obtain an expression for the normalized delay. You see that it uh, contains the ratio of the wire RC product and the inverter RC product, at least at two places. So at this point, I found it convenient to introduce the wire effort, WE, that is the ratio between the two RC products. This is a new concept, I haven't seen it anywhere, but it relates well to the logical effort and the parasitic delay that we had for logical gates. In our case, in our example, the wire effort is equal to 22, and the normalized delay can now be rewritten as P in the parasitic delay of the inverter, plus 1, that is the electrical effort, plus these three terms expressed in the wire effort. Having developed a rather convenient delay model based on the assumption of a dominating time constant, let's apply the model for finding the size of the inverter that minimizes the wire delay. To do this, we take the derivative of the normalized delay with respect to the uh, effective resistance of the driving inverter. We obtain a value of the optimal driving resistance, that is the wire resistance, divided by the square root of the wire effort. With 800 ohms as a wire resistance and a wire effort of 22, the optimal effective resistance of the driving inverter is 170 ohms. Having defined inverter size 10x for inverters with an effective resistance of 2k, 120x is the inverter size with an effective resistance of 170 ohms that minimizes the delay caused by the wire. Assuming a parasitic inverter delay equal to 1 and having a wire effort of 22, we obtain the minimum normalized delay 2 plus 2 times the square root out of wire effort plus wire effort over 2 equal to 22.5. What does that tell us? Well, the total delay becomes 22.5 multiples of the basic 5 picoseconds that we have defined for the 65 nanometer process. That is 112.5 picoseconds, a value to be compared to the 10 picoseconds without the wire. For keeping wires short, what if we divide the wire in the example into two segments by inserting a repeater in the middle? A repeater is just an identical inverter that we call repeater because it repeats the signal. And to estimate the propagation delay, just add the two segment delays. So this is the first segment and the driver inverter, and the same driver here as a repeater. So we can um, add, just add the two segment delays. And we have this expression. Again, the delay without the wire. The wire effort of the segment is now one fourth. The wire resistance one half. Wire effort is one fourth. So this is using the delay equation on slide 8, and we have assumed that the wire effort 22 is still the wire effort of the complete uh, or 1 millimeter wire. Keeping the effective resistance equal to the optimal value, we arrive at an expression for the minimized normalized delay. This is the segment delay, and uh, if we apply numbers, so we have 2 for parasitic delay equal to 1 plus 2.35 plus 2.35, the two middle terms, and plus 2.8. So this equals to 19. That's just a small decrease of the wire delay from 22.5 to 19, but still, 
But what if the wire is much longer than one millimeter, say 10 to 15 millimeters? If the wire goes from one corner of the chip to the other corner of the chip, what would be the optimum number of segments into which the wire should be split by inserting M minus one identical repeaters for minimizing the delay? If we keep the wire effort being the wire effort of the total long wire, the delay can be written. So we have M segments, we have the delay without the wire. We have here the wire effort divided by m squared for the segment, the resistance of the wire segment, and again, and the wire effort divided by m squared. Taking the derivative of the normalized delay with respect to m gives us this expression for the optimal number of segments. And for the simple case of the parasitic delay of the inverter equal to one, we have square root out of the wire effort divided by two. The previous inverter sizing is still optimal since the two middle terms yielding the relationship between the effective resistance and the wire resistance, they are independent of the number of segments as we can see in the equation here. This gives us a total minimum delay of four times square root out of wire effort. So this optimization, we have made all the four terms, all the four terms in this expression, they are equal now. We can also derive an expression for the critical wire length for considering repeater insertion. So this critical wire length is equal to the wire length divided by the optimum number of uh, segments. So we get this expression. We can replace wire effort by the definition, eliminate the wire length and come up with inverter RC times the wire RC per unit area, 7.2 divided by 160. And for our values, we get 0.4 millimeters. So in our case of a one millimeter wire, it's optimal to divide the wire into two segments. However, the gain, as we saw, was small and the signal furthermore became inverted. So take another example with a 10 millimeter wire. The critical uh, wire length being 0.4 millimeters suggests that we should insert 22 repeaters and we should divide the wire into 23 segments. The wire effort is now 100 times larger because it increases with the square of the wire length, so it's 2,200. And the, the minimum normalized delay is now four times square root out of wire effort, and that is 190. And if we summarize the 23 stage delays given, it gives the same results. So 23 segments times a delay without a wire, two times square root out of wire effort and wire effort over 46, equal to 46 plus two times 47 plus 48. We can see that 46, 47, 48, the four terms are almost identical. So we have 190. And one important comment is that an even number of repeaters, they um, do not invert the signal. So to conclude, we have int introduced a distributed wire RC model, the PI model. We have discussed the relevance of a delay model assuming the existence of a dominant time constant. We have understood that wires should be kept short since wire delay or flight time increases with the wire length squared. Keep wires short is the advice. For long wires, delay can be minimized by inserting repeaters. And we have derived expressions for the optimum number of segments and for the critical wire length. So thank you very much for listening.